A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Filled with the Holy Spirit, Jesus returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the desert for 40 days to be tempted by the devil. He ate nothing during those days, and when they were over, he was hungry. The devil said to him, If you are the Son of God, command this stone to become bread. Jesus answered him, It is written, One does not live on bread alone. Then the devil took him, and took him up and showed him all the kingdoms of the world in a single instant. The devil said to him, I shall give to you all this power and glory, for it has been handed over to me, and I may give it to whomever I wish. All this will be yours if you worship me. And Jesus said to him in reply, It is written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and him alone shall you serve. Then he led him to Jerusalem, made him stand at the parapet of the temple, and said to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down from here. For it is written, He will command his angels concerning you to guard you, and with their hands they will support you, lest you dash your foot against a stone. And Jesus said to him in reply, It also says, You shall not put the Lord your God to the test. When the devil had finished every temptation, he departed from him until another time. The Gospel of the Lord. Make me a channel of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me bring your love. Where there is injury, your pardon, Lord. And where there's doubt, true faith in you. It's a great prayer, isn't it? The peace prayer of St. Francis. It was written by the greatest saint who ever lived, right? St. Francis. And I think it's a prayer that, I, that really speaks to what we all really want. You know, nobody gets up in the morning and says, how can I ruin somebody's day today? No, we get up in the morning and we think, all right, another day, another opportunity. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there's hatred, let me sow love. Where there's injury, pardon. Where there's doubt, faith. Where there's despair, hope. Where there's darkness, light. It's what we all want, right? And the thing is, Make me a channel of your peace. Where there's despair in life, let me bring hope. Where there is darkness, only light. And where there's sadness, ever joy. Really, it's not a prayer about making magic or asking God to do something that, that God can't do. It's really a matter of us being open to God. Our prayer doesn't change God our prayer changes us, right? When we pray to be an instrument of peace, what we're really doing is looking for opportunities to be an instrument of peace. You want to be an instrument of peace? Look for conflict. <laughs> you don't have to look too far, right? It's really about the mission, what we're called to be as a church. Oh, Master, grant that I may never seek so much to be consoled as to console to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love with all my soul. And the good news about that song is that we're not in this thing by ourselves. The good news is that we have a God who wants to walk with us, and, we're, and he walks with all of us. You know, it's like, it's almost like there's this big orchestra God's orchestra, and each of us has a part to play. So here's the first question for today. Are you playing your part? Are you singing your song? Are you the Christian that you want to be? Are you the follower of the gospel that you're called to be? That's what Lent is all about, isn't it? It's about getting back to those basic questions. <laughs> I always remember a great story about my nephew, I have 19 nephews and nieces, and one of them, Kevin, when he was about nine years old, he decided to play the trumpet. I myself played the trumpet, so he thought, well, maybe I'll imitate my uncle and play the trumpet. So Kevin started practicing, and quite frankly, it didn't sound too good. <laughs> you know how it is when kids are, play a musical instrument. It sounded like, uh, rah, rah, rah. And so uh, one day, without ever really improving, Kevin comes running home from school, and he's all excited puts his trumpet case on the floor in the kitchen. He says, Mom, you know what? He says, 
I sound really good when the whole band is playing. <laughs> you know, that to me is a wonderful image of our church. We sound good when the whole band is playing, when we're in this thing together, when we're not alone. You know, Lent is an interesting time, right? Every year on the first Sunday of Lent, we hear the story that I just read from the Gospel of Luke. One year from Matthew, one year from Mark, one year from Luke. And the Gospel story is the story of the temptation of Jesus. How he found himself right after being baptized. You know, it says here that the, the Spirit led Jesus into the desert. The Spirit led him there, right? And what was the temptation? What was he tempted to believe or to deny? Jesus was tempted to deny what he just heard in the water. What did he hear when he was baptized? You are my beloved son, in you I am well pleased. And immediately after that, the Spirit, Jesus is filled with the Spirit, and he's sent out into the desert, and, he, and he's there for 40 days and 40 nights. And after 40 days and 40 nights, the gospel says he was hungry. <laughs> yeah, I wonder how he was on day two or day three. Anyway, the devil comes, right? And the devil tempts Jesus not to do something bad, not to be evil, not to, be, uh, to commit a sin. You know what he tempts him to do? To deny what he just heard. The devil says to him, you think you're the son of God? <laughs> you're not the son of God. God would never let his son be hungry. Here, change this stone into bread. And I gotta tell you, I believe Jesus was tempted. Tempted to, to, to test God, to see, to, to, to try to figure this thing out. Interesting, no? And Jesus finally says, no, no, you know what? I am the son of God and I'm, sometimes I'm hungry. And then the devil takes Jesus up and, and shows him all the, the kingdoms of the world. He says, you can have all this if you worship me. You can have all this power. If you're the son of God, you'll never be powerless. And Jesus says, no, you know what? I am the son of God and sometimes I'm powerless. And then the devil takes Jesus to the parapet of the temple and, and you know, tells him to throw himself off. Because, you know, if you're the son of God, which you're not, you would never be in danger. And Jesus' response is, you know what, devil? I am the son of God, and sometimes I'm in danger. Now, what's the message for you and me? The message for you and me is, life is hard. Sometimes things happen. Sometimes we doubt who we are. Sometimes we forget our baptism. You know, really, Lent is about getting back to baptism. It's about remembering who you are. Notice this, at baptism, we, we say to this child, this new, new Christian, Christian, the Christian community welcomes you with great joy. In its name, I claim you for Jesus Christ with the sign of the cross. And now I trace that cross on your forehead and I invite your parents and godparents to do the same. And they do. We're claimed for Jesus Christ at our baptism. And then every year we begin Lent with that same sign of the cross right on the forehead. I want to invite you today to think about your own life and think about some of the struggles that happen in your life, right? There's a beautiful music video by a guy named Jason Gray. It's called Remind Me Who I Am. Today I want to invite you to Go online and look up that music video and listen to what the words say. It says, when I lose my way and I forget my name, it's baptismal. Remind me who I am. This is a prayer to God. When in the mirror all I see is who I don't want to be, remind me who I am. In the loneliest places, when I can't remember what grace is, tell me once again who I am. You know who you are? You are beloved. You will be tempted, just like Jesus was. And it says at the end of the gospel, when the devil had finished every temptation, he departed from him until another time. The word in Greek is kairos. That Jesus knows that there will be another time when that devil will come.
Take this word to heart. You believe, we believe in a God who loves us and we are God's beloved. And so we can pray. Make me a channel of your peace. It is in pardoning that we are pardoned, in giving of ourselves that we receive, and in dying that we're born to eternal life. Jesus said, go out to the whole world and announce the good news. And that's what Shalom is doing, is bringing the good news of the Holy Spirit in action, renewing the face of the earth, so that all people may know how good is the Lord, how beautiful is the work of salvation. Thank you, Shalom, for all you do to reach out, to lead the faith forward. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit.